Hi there, welcome to the third lesson in which we are going to see the structure we can find in the different mythological creatures we are going to work with. The descriptions I'll be providing you are explained in depth, just for you to get an idea of what you have to reflect in your illustration. I'm going to start the lesson explaining the Selkies. Selkies are creatures that are very common in Scottish and Irish folklore tales. They are mythological beings represented as seals that inhabit cold waters close to the lands where the legends belong. The special features of these seals are that they are capable of metamorphosing, it is, changing from seal to human form by shedding their skin to get to walk between humans. So I'm going to start by showing these three pictures as references to explain how you can make the anatomy of the seal. Take some basic structures as a starting point. I'm going to draw a circle to do the head. As you can see, what we are doing is drawing these rounded shapes to create the skull of the animal. I'm not copying any of these seals I have on the left. What I want to do is creating a structure based on or inspired by three images. As you can see, they have a kind of fins similar to sharks or dolphins. However, these are softer that's why they are more flexible, which allows them to walk on land and stand upright. They have a quite aerodynamic structure. Okay, let me synthesize this structure with this little doodle here. So, its body is mainly formed by ovals and flippers represented by these two irregular shapes. Regarding the body, it's quite dynamic, although it has restricting mobility. If we look closely, their anatomy, or better, their body structure, resembles to a missile or bomb or something like that. Don't you think so? And thanks to it, they can move easily underwater. The face is pretty similar to other mammals, like dogs or cats. It's kind of a mixture of both of them. They have also plenty of whiskers, which are quite long, something you have to keep in mind when drawing a seal. Well, there are many different species of seals, like the sea lions, the elephant seal, the South American sea lion, and so on. There are a lot of them, and obviously not all of them have the same characteristics nor facial expressions. As you can see here, I've done the flippers, which are very easy to make. The one on the right seems like a mustache, a bird or some, something weird, and the other one is more like a marine animal's fin. Let's make now the human shape. It's important that you take into account that selkies are half seal and half human. That's why I suggest and I think that it's better that both beings share similar characteristics. Well, first of all, I'm going to organize all this. Something I'm sure about is that the male character will have more square shapes than the woman. I still don't know the height since I need to compare both of them, but I'll see. Okay, let's start making a circle as we did with the seal's head because I want that my design is based on these curves. I 
As you can notice, I'm making the arms, the forearm, the chest, the waist, shoulders and face. And I'm representing all of them with the spheres. This is the mannequin I do in most of my courses to represent anatomy. So guys, the sketch is almost finished, just a neck. Great. What I'm going to do now is draw in the outline of the model so that this person's shape can be identified easily. Guys, be really careful when drawing your model since you'll be inspired by it to create your character. So it doesn't make sense if you create a structure and then don't use it as a reference. And here we have a curvy woman. I really love the results, actually. Okay, I won't be paying too much attention to the face. In this case, as this being undergoes a metamorphosis, what interests us the most is that the human body shares some characteristics with the seal body so that it's coherent. Regarding selkies, they are mythological beings which fascinate human beings. They have similar characteristics to mermaids. And according to the legend, female selkies removed their skin only when they were out of the water. So, men, sailors, took advantage of it to steal their skins and, as a consequence, female selkies were forced to remain on land and can't go back to the ocean. Even so, as they were marine creatures, female selkies returned to the ocean as soon as they were able to get their skin back. And what about male selkies? Well, it's said that in order for any woman to see a male selkie, they would need to shed seven tears into the sea, and this way they would remain by their side. So, as you can see, I'm trying to keep the rounded shapes, but I want him to have a more pronounced and expanded shape. It is square shapes instead of rounded ones. So, let's make him stronger so that his features can be identified with a man. As you can see, we are drawing stride lines. Okay, let's adjust the legs since there's no enough space. Oops, yeah, I was right. There's a little space, so the, the legs are too small. <laughs> Let's just adjust it. How? Select it, then Command T to change anything you need. See? If we compare it with the woman, the man is quite short. And the arms will be also too long. So, I think I'm going to change it a little bit. Okay. So, as I said, I'm going to change it and lengthen the legs. Poor guy, I made him too short. And there it goes. And now the arms fit better, since the end of the arms should be where the waist ends, kind of. You need to keep this in mind. I'm basing this figure on the characteristic of the animal it's supposed to metamorphose into, which is, in this case, a seal. In your case, however, you can interpret it in a different way. So, there might be similar characteristics, but the truth is that the text about selkies I found only refer to handsome creatures, but don't go into further details. That's why we ha can have our own interpretation of the text. 
I see them as creatures with brown or dark hair and with a body structure similar to the one I draw. Let's compare now both shapes, female and male. And here we can spot the main differences between them that I've been emphasizing during the lesson. I suggest you compare them as well. So guys, this is the end of lesson 3. In the next one, we are going to continue comparing them and going to different characteristics so that you can apply them to your drawings. See you!